Hello, everyone. Welcome to this first lighting talk of the day. I suppose it is the lunch hour at the moment. So if you are staying here, you must be the geeks among all the geeks. So I totally appreciate that. Let's give ourselves a big hand. Um, so today, I'm going to present you with a software that is going to push all the terminals in Linux and Unix world beyond its designed task. And let's see how we are going to do it. So a very classic scenario we have in computing is that we wish to access a computer remotely. And uh, in Linux world, uh, in Windows world, there is remote desktop, which uh, is pretty much the standard way, other than PowerShell running in remote. And in Linux, most of us are very comfortable with secure shell SSH. And a lot of us are also, uh, some of us may also find VNC, which is virtual network computing, a little bit more easier to use than SSH in certain tasks only. And uh, VNC is a very simple protocol. Um, pretty much you can move your mouse around, you can click on your mouse and you can type on some keys on your keyboard, and eventually, eventually you see the feedback from your computer screen. A very big limitation in comparison to the Windows solution of remote desktop is that in Linux, we do not have sound forwarded to your client, unless you fiddle with, um, I suppose, pause audio and things like that, and Linux is so customizable, there will be a solution. So um, in summary, VNC is the remote desktop for uh, the remote desktop solution for Linux. And uh, it looks like this. So here we have a VNC client connected to a, uh, I think that was a Leap 42.2, displaying some very colorful windows. So. Most of us are also very, very comfortable with using terminals. I guess most of, uh, I guess maybe all of us are using terminals. So who has used the Linux terminal today? Thank you, I see most of you have used a Linux terminal. And you all know that it is an incredibly efficient solution to do anything with your Linux computer or Unix computer. And it is incredibly powerful, especially efficient. Um, now, the greatest limitation while you are using terminal is probably that you cannot do any graphical task with it. For example, has anyone browsed the greatest internet we have as of today on a terminal? Has anyone done that before? Please raise your hand. Thank you, and may I ask uh, what's, uh, what sort of solution you use to do that? W3M with uh, Xterm and the links, that those are the answers I've heard so far. And uh, how do you deal with those websites that force you to use JavaScript? Oh, great, okay, so th those websites could definitely use some better user uh, experience design to accommodate for uh, geeks like you. So we are all geeks and in in I presented myself with this exact challenge. So how do I, well, in the unlikely case that I will never want to touch graphical windows, uh, in the unlikely case that all I have is a terminal window and um, I need to do some graphical work really desperately, how would I do that? So, um, oh, before we move on, let's take a look at, this is a very classic terminal window you see a lot, with a lot of text and a lot of information on the screen. Incredibly efficient. Incredibly, incredibly neat. So let's push this capability beyond its designed purpose. Oh, what about this one day you are presented with a VT220 terminal, and all you have is that terminal, yet you are so desperate to watch a YouTube video or watch some of this presentation on, uh, in, uh, in uh, um, LibreOffice. How would you do that? Does anyone have a and have an idea at the moment or a suggestion? No, okay. All right, so, so excuse me. Great, then, and, and uh, yeah, that, that, that might work as well. So hereby, I wish to present you with a solution. Now, how do you imagine to have a fully functional VNC client that not only draws the screen 
content of the remote computer in your terminal, but also allows you to control the mouse and keyboard. How cool would that be? That would solve every single problem we have with terminals, right? Um, therefore, the software is called head more in contrast to head less server. So it gives, um, it's a head more for a headless server. And it is incredibly capable of doing graphical work, which I will demonstrate shortly. And uh, if you wish to test out the software after the presentation, please feel free to install it on your Tumbleweed computer. Or in case that you are running an enterprise edition of SUSE, which is SLES, you are most welcome to try out this software via the SUSE package hub, which is um, which has a nice collection of softwares that you don't find on SLES. Uh, therefore, this software is now enterprise certified with the inclusion on Package Hub. By the way, I'm totally serious now. <laughs> and this is how it will roughly look like. So now, shall we see a live demo? Who's interested? Thank you. OK, let's see a live demo. Right now, we have a VNC server that is running on localhost, and uh, hereby we connect a VNC client. And uh, now, on the on the left hand side of the keyboard, you are, you are controlling the viewer by panning it, zooming in, zooming out, so that you can actually see something. Because as you can see now, there's a red square in the middle. That's where your mouse pointer is. And uh, otherwise, you can see uh, roughly there's the shape of a light bulb over there. So um, let's do me and take a look at take a closer look at the light bulb. Oh, we are running open source. Great. And on the right hand side, you are controlling the mouse. You can move the mouse cursor around. Right click. Oh, we cannot really see what's happening in the menu, so let's zoom in. Let, let us better zoom in and take a look. We have the X term, great. So uh, shall we? Uh, okay, now your choice. Which application shall I launch now? GIMP, Firefox, your choice. X term, great. Okay, so uh, let's move the mouse around. Click. Zoom out. Maybe I clicked uh, the wrong place. So zoom in again. Looks like X term is broken, just like uh, the, the just like the um, the uh, VGA connection moments ago. So let's see if we can launch GIMP. Oh, great. Okay, just a moment. It has happened not only to my VNC client, but to other VNC clients too. Until this very day, I don't understand. Probably one of you who's very familiar with the graphical stack may be able to help out. Great, now we have a terminal window, and let's zoom in and type something. This is incredibly um, this is powerful enough to watch video just in, uh, to, to watch YouTube video just in case you are wondering. So let's uh, type something real fast. There we have it. So um, let's back, get back to our presentation now. So um, regarding terminal programming, just in case that. You, if this demo of this uh, simple piece of software gets you interested into terminal programming, I wish to uh, remind you that terminal is not what is not the same as where it was many many years ago, when we did not have UTF-8 text properly supported or we don't have so many colors. And now terminal is an incredibly powerful piece of uh, software. 
uh, in case you wish to, um, the, the primary interface to interact with the terminal is of course using your keyboard. And uh, there are two frameworks that will make the task a little bit easier. One primitive framework is uh, a very f uh, familiar name to, uh, to all of us, which is Encursus. Well, uh, just uh, yesterday or the day before, Tumbleweed broke Encursus and broke a lot of application. I suppose that could be fixed, but bug report is uh, working in progress. And another library which was used to implement had more is libkaka. Well, kaka, some of your uh, may mean something in your uh, language, so you, you know what it means. Let's get a taste of how it actually looks to make a Kaka program. And in this very simple example, just very short few lines of code will actually get you a very capable terminal applications already. And in this particular case, it shows um, it, uh, it draws over your terminal and show you which, which key is pressed. So, uh, but to, to make it into something more like a WNC client, it will take a little bit more work to draw and all. And Terminal programming itself is actually not difficult at all because terminal is an incredibly simple interface. However, however there are several quirks which I have to uh, remind you just in case you are interested in it and, and then find uh, meet these quirks yourself. The greatest one of which is that, did you, did you know that e, uh, the escape key, um, uh, when you give a terminal an escape key input, it is identical to clicking an out key. And if you, for example, type an out key plus another key, what in fact what the terminal receives is, a, is a, an escape key event sh uh, followed shortly by the second key that you pressed. And control key emits very independent key code, well, uh, a whole new set of key codes that are different from uh, the other key, and the shift key also emits a new key code. Um, so, so this is a very short introduction to uh, terminal programming, and I will, of course, make the slides available from this source code. And I wish to say thank you. Um, thank you for coming here. And uh, if you wish, check out my other fun projects. For example, how would you imagine to control your computer via a satellite telephone or SMS text? And now there is a solution for you, just in case you wish to check, out, check it out after the demo. So monitor slides one. Monitor is slide two, and thanks very much. <laughs>